Impact Lounge is the number one YouTube channel for fans of Impact Wrestling. Make, make a, make a, uh, a good, good lucha, lucha thing. It's just a fact of life. Eli Drake. That is just a fact of life. Hi, welcome back to another Impact Lounge exclusive. I'm here with the name of Dummies, right? The Perpetual... Remember that? Perpetual... Um, I, uh, this is a terrible start to interview. We should really stop this, but we're not going to. Yeah, don't stop um, this. Have you messed it up? Have you messed it up? You messed it up. Yeah. Yeah. These things happen. Yeah, right. Don't exactly. Where's the button? So anyway, uh, delighted to have you on the show. Thank Absolutely. you. I'm delighted to Genuine. be here. Is this your first time in the UK? No, second. Um, I was here, what, 2016, when we did, we did a loop from Manchester, London, and Birmingham. 2016? Oh, yeah, that's right. It was a, it was a limited run, wasn't it, over here? So before you did Glasgow, when you weren't with the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do all those and, uh, and I, yeah. All right, okay. So, so looking forward to, to facing our hometown hero. We're, we're Glaswegian, so... Oh, I'm sorry, you're what? Glaswegian. Glaswegian. Glasgow, do you say? Glasgow. Glaswegian? Glaswegian, yeah. I've not heard that before. No, never. Yeah. It's like you mixed in like Norway with it's Scotland. Every day's a school day. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so Joe Hendry's our hometown hero. All right. So uh, what's going to be different in this uh, this this third decider tomorrow? Um, nothing. It's going to be more like the second one. So. More like the second one. Yeah. Yeah. What's it been like working with Joe? Uh, Joe's Joe's all right. I mean, you know, he's spent a little too much time behind his, behind his computer, but uh, you know, what can you do? I'm spending time in the gym and uh, spending time in front of the camera and being like, hey, dummies, let me talk to you. And, uh, you know, at some point, maybe if he can pick up a microphone, we can actually talk instead of making these dumb videos and it'd be okay. Very true, yeah. So, so anyway, this week, well, last week for us, um, we defeated Mr. Atlantis. <laughs> Fantastic. Tough I'm, challenge. I, I'm loving Actually, I defeated his friend, Brendan Tidwell. And then, for his troubles, I gave Mr. Atlantis a first-class ticket. And, of course, you had... Uh, What's his name? The the Indiana Jones guy this week. Brock. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Rock Stidwell. Sure. I can't remember. It's terrible. It was only aired in the UK last night. That's why. Hey, what's what's the? I don't know. Anyway, so yeah, he does his Twitch show as well. So so is this the way that you're going with your characters, Mike? So, just to jump back. Obviously, when you lost the title, it was around the time when you were still negotiating with the company sure. to get a new contract. Those kind of things. And I know it takes time to start. Progressing your storylines, get you back in your main line, yeah. main event picture. So, so, how do you feel about what you're doing? Though, are you enjoying it? Yeah, I mean, it it, it, it kind of sucks that there was so much uncertainty for a while. So it kind of, you know, it was like, oh well, we don't want to give him too much steam if he's going to leave. Um, I guess it's the nature of the beast, though. Um, but yeah, because I didn't know if I was going to stay, I didn't know if I was going to go. But at this point, I decided to do an inventory of my life and be like, hey. Uh, I like everything I'm doing right now. I like where I am. I have no reason to leave and go stick myself in a warehouse in Orlando, Florida for a pay cut. So, um, so I decided to stay where I was. Uh, and I like the idea that I can, uh, for the most part, kind of do things my way. Um, so, yeah, I did that. So, it's all that, though, that do things your own way. Creative has obviously changed in the last few years since yeah. you've been there. How would you get on with creative now, and how much input do you have in what you're doing on screen? Um, I, I mean, for the most part, they're, they're kind of steering the ship, I guess, in some certain way. But at the same time, it's like, if you're going to hand me a piece of uh, a piece of paper and tell me what to say, there's a very small chance I'm actually going to say it. So uh, it's kind of give me, give me an idea of what direction I'm going in, uh, and I'll give you the exact outcome that we want, in my words. So um, that's kind of how I've always done it, though. But I've had the good fortune of when I came into the company, um, I've worked with uh, David Lagana before when he was with the company then. So he kind of knew my strengths a little bit. So when I had a promo segment, it was kind of tailored to me and worked just right because he was familiar. With me. So I had that fortune. But, so a lot of times they'd give me stuff and I'd just be like, eh, yeah, I'll just put this over here and I got it. Brilliant answer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, obviously the direction at the moment is you've got your open challenges involved with the Cotton Lee. We've just interviewed Trevor as yeah. well. Do we expect this kind of storyline to go on all the way up to Bound for Glory, or have you got something lined up before then? Well, I mean, it's, it's tough to tell what we're going to do next. We're going to Mexico next week, so you never know. Might have to call out some tontos. See, see, got some uh, Hispanic uh, Mexican tortillas down there. Going to taste some delicious 
uh, Mexican fare while I'm there, and then I'm going to say, hey, open challenge, dummies, come on in. So who can we expect to see? I have no idea. Ray Mysterio? Mil Mascaris might uh, come right down the line. You never know. Nice Leech Underground. Uh, uh, Reference that, of course, yeah, yeah. So, Mexico, have you wrestled in Mexico before? Yeah, many times. Where have you been? We're, we're just a small little island over here. I mean, we don't get uh, to see everything that you do. No, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I've been uh, a year ago, right after I won the title at Impact, uh, they sent me damn everywhere to, to go defend that thing. I went to Mexico, I went to Japan. Um, I don't remember where else, but yeah, I went to Mexico last year, Mexico 2013, 2014, 2015. 2016, you see where I'm going. Absolutely. I remember you in Japan watching uh, the, ty- the, the Challenger match on uh, your Skype. Very, very good. Yeah. yeah. In the locker room there with you and all that. Top. That was, that's that was right. That was interesting. That's right. Well, you know, I work on some stuff. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, um, obviously, uh, you, you've been with the company for quite some time now. What do you think is different about this current incarnation of Impact that made you want to resign? Um, well, it's, it's just that we're starting to get a little bit of a buzz, um, and I think there's a little bit of a um, leveling off. There was a, a level of volatility that was just crazy for the last few years, where it was like, things are good, no, no, they're not, they're good, no, they're not, no, they're good, no, they're not, and now it's kind of like leveled off, and now it's starting to do that gradual climb, which I like. So it's like, it's, it's a matter of having stability in the office. Um, stability just from a company standpoint and then on top of that just having a strong direction uh, as far as creatively where we want to go and I feel like we're building characters we're building stories and that's really the basis of this whole business from the beginning of time it's always been stories what's the story how do the people connect and if we can connect with people that's the name of the game just on that, about the storylines, I'm, I'm a huge fan of storyline-based uh, wrestling. Sure. One thing I've noticed about your movesets, you, you started to, to bust out wine salts and things like that off the ropes. Yeah, there on occasion. Not too much. I don't like to overdo it. Uh, you know what that is? It's just kind of um, kind of giving a wink to the old uh, Twitter IWC. Is that what they call it? IWC. I believe so. Um, because, you know, at, at first you, you hear, well, he's just a promo guy. And I, I'll sprinkle it in right now. And, oh, wait, I didn't think he could do that. Yeah, he could do that. Uh, but it's just, it, it, I don't, it's not necessary to do that stuff all the time. So occasionally I'll throw it in where it seems like it fits. If it doesn't fit, I don't do it. Talking of big guys who do that kind of stuff, obviously, uh, Brian Cage is in the X Division champion at the moment. Yeah. Now you've got a bit of history with Brian, haven't you? Sure. Um, he and I tagged for a long time when we were out on the West Coast in California. Um, solid dude. We were good, solid uh, partners for a long time. It was kind of I, I was the talker, and and he was kind of the uh, the, the move guy. So um, it worked out well. Do you think that's something that you you'd like to revisit on Impact? I don't know if we'll be a team, uh, but we might find ourselves face to face in the ring at some point. You never okay. know. Is that something that you'd want? Sure. Have all the guys on the roster. Is that sure? Yeah. Uh, although you know some of those moves I see him do, they're, they're in a chance in hell. But. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it'd be cool though. It'd be cool to uh, cool to explore. Okay, so so on that note, uh, obviously he's carrying the X division. If you were given a chance at the X division over the World Championship or the Grand Championship, Global Championship, whatever it's called these days, what, what would you world rather? Championship. World Championship. I, I definitely want the World Championship. To me, that's that's the main prize in the game. Um, that, that's the one that's the flag bearer for the company. X Division's cool. Uh, a lot of people say X Division's what kind of gave Impact its its identity years ago or whatever. Uh, but to me, um, I always want to be the main guy, the top of the heap, and I feel like that's the world champion. Okay. So going back to the old world championship ring, yeah. obviously quite a long ring. What was it in the end? Well, it was like 150 days or something like that. So it's, uh, it's just under six months, is it? Like yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when, when you look back on it, um, I think I'm in the top 10 of longest ever impact reigns. It's damn good. And uh, if you get to, when, so when you get your second reign, wow. uh, I'm guessing you'll be near the top 10 of uh, cumulative. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Bob, I'm guessing Bobby Roode's number one, is he? I don't. It was either Bobby Roode or Kurt Angle, I think. Uh, for, actually, it was cumulative days. Even cumulative days have them in the top 10. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, we're going back to your championship reign. Yeah. Um, at the time, once again, a lot of turmoil in the company. We've already just talked about it. Alberto was feuding with Johnny Impact to, to be your challenger. Yep. 
when you look back at that, did you almost feel that um, you were wasted at that time? Because, oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. Uh, but but uh, here's the thing, is, is the regime that was in, <clears throat> when they when an Anthem initially took over and they brought in uh, Jeff Jarrett and whoever, um, I wasn't the guy they wanted. Um, I, I was fortunate enough that a couple of the guys in creative really pushed me hard and they were like, I think we need to go with this. And there was a lot of resistance, resistance, resistance. And if you look at the way that it was all done, um, you can see that the title was put on me. I, I was given the title, but I still wasn't really given the reins. Uh, the focus was still on other guys. It was on Moose, it was on Bobby Lashley. And maybe it should have been. I don't know. But to me, it's like if you want to give somebody uh, the focus, you want to give them the spotlight, give them the spotlight. Don't just give them a little bit of it. Um, and, and then uh, kind of killing it. It, was just, it just showed me that that, that regime didn't trust me. And I think going forward and doing the Patron and Johnny Impact thing, I think was also showing a little bit of a lack of trust. But I think eventually, as we got to the end of that, some of the trust was gained. Of okay, this guy, this guy can carry the load. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, when we when we talked in the past, we, you know, I've always said, huge fan. Always felt disappointed by it for you as well. You know, yeah. because uh, it could have been so much better. And, for sure. Uh, and hopefully, next time round, it, it will be a, a lot different. So, you've signed a new. Long term contract. What that mean? Well, that's that, that's the question. To find long term, okay, can you reveal how long you're likely to be around? Longer than a two month extension, which is the really, yeah, good. so. All right, so you got the the scoop that I was I was coming up on May 31st. Well, I needed more time to figure stuff out, so we negotiated a two month extension. So I was up to July 31st. So that was initially what was announced was that there was an extension. And then I guess that was when they decided to say long-term contract. I think it's 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 a year, but it might be a little longer. We'll find out. Right? But, so, so in other words, we could be coming up close to the end of the game. Then. Is that what you're saying? Um, you never know. We'll see what happens. We we want to see you pass bank for glory, surely. Oh yeah, be bank. Yeah, that's, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. I, was, I was about to turn off the series link on my taping of Impact here. <laughs> come, come on, Eli. Oh, no, I'll, I'll be around for a while. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So, um, at the tail end of when you, you were champion, you still had Chris Masters, yeah. or Chris Adonis, I should say. Um, how do you feel about him leaving? Uh, do you keep in contact with him? Yeah, I just saw him last week, actually, in Vegas. I love that guy. Um, kind of sucks the way he left. Um, kind of sucks that he just kind of... He literally just left in the middle of the night. Nobody knew what the deal was. I mean, he had, he had expressed some unhappy to, uh, unhappiness to me the week before going in to TV. Um, and I get it, because kind of the way he was booked, it kind of... I get it. Um, I probably wouldn't want to be booked the way he was booked either. Um, but at the same time, I, I feel like there was probably a better way to deal with it. Um, better way to exit. But uh, at the same time, I, I love the guy, so I don't have anything bad to say about him. Um, what was the plan there? Was that for you to eventually feed him? Because that's usually the way these things go, isn't it? I don't know, actually. I, I, I think eventually we were just going to kind of peacefully go our separate ways. That's, that's a new one in wrestling. Well, yeah, and, and I think that that's kind of why we were thinking about doing it that way, because usually you know, it's always the way it goes, right? It's always got to be a feud on the way out, but why not just, why can't guys just kind of... Actually, if you remember the, the Hart Foundation initially when uh, Brett and the Anvil just kind of separately went their own mm -hmm. way for a long time. Why couldn't we do that? Well, there you go. Something we'll never see. There you go. Not, not in this incarnation, anyway. Right. But uh, all right, let's let's go back to where we started. You you've been feuding with not feuding with the cult leader. You've been having some fun with the cult leader. Yeah. So tell me more about those guys. Do, do you hang with them? Who do you hang with? I hang with people. You're digging deep you here. Must, you must hang with someone. I don't hang with anybody. I'm kind of hoping I'm it's a, some of the knockouts. I'm a loner. I hang out with all the knockouts. That's the only people <laughs> I hang out with. Um, no, I, I mean, the, the, those guys are uh, good young talents. So they're, they're amazing. I, I watch Trevor, uh, you know, do all kinds of crazy stunts during the day before we, uh, before the show starts. He's kind of messing around the ring, bouncing around the ropes and stuff. Um, but the cool thing is, like, he's got a lot of personality. He's actually really funny. And I don't think a lot of people got a chance to see that. So uh, I think in the last couple of weeks, getting to see different dumb stuff and, and where he's, you know, trying to do the promos like me and stuff like that, uh, you get a little taste. Oh, a little more. So, so hopefully he can... Look, see, uh, and then if you get uh, get him to open up a little bit and talk, it's uh, it can be a good time. Excellent. Get him out of his shell. Hey, well, we, we've just finished interviewing him. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. He's a nice guy. And uh, that beard. You ever thought about a beard like that? No, no, not at all. I would never do that. So anyway, you get stuff lost in there. 
So is that part of the storyline over now? Is that continuing for the next series? Can uh, you, can you I, reveal anything to us? I would love to reveal that to you. I have no idea. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know if I'm going to cross paths with them. Again, we're going to Mexico next week. So who knows what happens. And Bound for Glory, do you know where you're, where you're heading? As in, not venue, yeah, I feel as like, in story. I feel like that's still so far away. I don't. Anything can happen. It's just so much time. Yeah. Uh, two September. Oh damn! It's uh, it's September now. Isn't it? I guess it's only a month away. That, it feels like leaps and bounds away from me. For some reason. So I'm guessing the uh, Vegas tapings, isn't it? It's Vegas tapings first. Yeah, October 14th, right? So that will be just before Bound for Glory. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Bound for Glory is October 14th. It's. It, oh no, you're right. You're right. Yeah. The Vegas tapings are in November. Uh, Bound for Glory is in New York in October. Yeah. So, so it's just the Mexico tapings then, and then uh, Mexico tapings, and then we got uh, New York. Bound for Glory. Fantastic. Yeah. So what are you going to do in Manchester tonight? Have you been to Manchester? I'm going to hang out at the uh, Star Wars Cantina here, have a drink with Greedo, and uh, I'll be shooting first. <laughs> Beat me to the punchline yeah. there. Damn, damn you, Drake. Damn you, Drake. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of activity going on out there. So. Yeah, the, uh, it's, it's very warm and sandy out yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh, Conditions are perfect. Anyway, it's been great having you on the show. Yes. I appreciate your time. Appreciate it. Looking forward to seeing what happens with Joe tomorrow. And do you know what? I said he's our hometown hero. I'm secretly rooting for you. I'm the hometown hero. I don't even live here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Hey, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Check out the video below for more Impact Wrestling-related content. This is the Impact Lounge.